How much is online buzz worth? According to Coca-Cola, a lot less than you might think. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill. All lights were red on Wall Street as the EU continues to wrestle with the failing banks in Cyprus. While most of the Dow 30 were down, IBM and Cisco systems having particularly bad days. Joining me in studio today, Matt Argusinger and Brian Hinman. Coca-Cola is the most popular consumer brand on Facebook, but at a conference earlier this week, a marketing executive from Coca-Cola shared that all of that online buzz was not translating into actual sales. Coke's research has once again raised questions about Facebook's ability to monetize the popular social network. Uh, how big a problem is this for Facebook? I think this Coke problem specifically is not a problem at all for Facebook. But the larger picture here, whether or not Facebook is effective as an advertising platform, is enormously important to Facebook. Now I say that it wasn't important for this Coke news. Already uh, a, a, a VP at Coke's marketing, uh, Wendy Clark, has come out and refuted basically the, uh, the announcement that was made the other day. And basically, Coke, Coke's at war with itself. Though. Coke's at war with itself. <laughs> and basically said, hey, viewed in a vacuum, uh, this is hard to measure that it's, that it's effective. But as part of a larger marketing plan, uh, we have seen that Facebook is a great contributor. And yet, Matt, when you think about the headline risk here, if you're Google, you've got to be loving this. Oh, I, I, th I think Google is loving it. I mean, you've got to remember that people go to Google. They use Google for a reason. They're searching for something. So it's an easy sell. If I, I want to see ads of stuff I'm actually looking for. I think what Facebook is going to struggle with that anytime they try to monetize their, you know, their billion members and their platform, they're always going to kind of run into hurting their user experience. And so that's, that's a big challenge for them. We are two months away from the one-year anniversary of Facebook's famed IPO. The stock is still well below the IPO price. What do you think of the stock? Yeah, Facebook needs to take control of this situation. They need to provide better tools for their advertisers to help measure the efficacy of them as a brand. If they're able to do that, I think the stock could be a buy. All right, let's get to some of the day's movers and shakers. Oracle down after reporting weak earnings for the third quarter. The company's CFO blamed the miss on Oracle's sales force. That's a nice morale boost, um, oh. but kidding aside, is this a buying opportunity? Well, yeah, something tells, yeah, something tells me Oracle's Glassdoor rating is going to take a bit of a hit. I, I don't know if it's a buying opportunity. The, the quarter was a little bit bad. You know, their new software licenses and subscription sales were down. That's usually a leading indicator that things are going to slow down. That said, Oracle's a, you know, a great company. They're usually number one and number two in every market they get into. I, I don't doubt them going forward. Cisco Systems was the biggest loser in the Dow Index today after getting downgraded by one analyst. And yet, Brian, for a couple of years now, the stock's done pretty well. Yeah, well, that's because it was cheap and there were no expectations. Right. The analyst <laughs> downgrade cited sort of the end of the, the growth era for routers and switches, which is about 50% of Cisco's sales. So that's a pretty big damning of Cisco's business. But at the same time, Cisco's sort of been admitting to that. They spent $7 billion on 14 acquisitions over the last 18 months, all of them in software. So clearly Cisco has sort of saw the writing on the wall and is already moving away from routers and switches. Shares of HomeAway hitting a new 52-week high. The online marketplace for vacation rental homes announced a partnership with a similar service in Asia. Uh, Matt, how big an impact, positive-wise, uh, is this going to have on HomeAway? This could be big. You know, HomeAway is a sort of market leader in the vac vacation rental space, and by adding in, you know, Travel Mobs Network, they, they're opening themselves up to, to, you know, villas and, you know, estates in places like Japan and China. It's, it could be huge for them. And finally, Guess down today after fourth quarter profits dropped 24 percent. The company also lowered guidance for the entire fiscal year. Brian, we were talking earlier, this is one retailer that is really struggling, particularly when you compare it to Abercrombie and & Fitch and Gap. This is now the fourth consecutive quarter of disappointing results for guests. So really, things are not good here. The, the big picture is in North America and Europe, customers just aren't showing up to the store. So what does that mean? It means inventories of stonewashed jeans are building up, and it's going to decimate gross margins in the next couple of quarters. Boy, if this was 1988, they'd be all set. Unfortunately, it is not. After their meeting earlier this week, the Federal Reserve left interest rates unchanged. So what does that mean for investors? Motley Fool columnist Morgan Housel shares his thoughts. So the Fed had announced yesterday that it's going to keep, that it's going to keep continuing with its quantitative easing policies. Is this good for the stock market? Yeah, it probably is. It's, a, it's been a big boost to the stock market. It's flooding the economy with cash. That's great for stocks going forward. 
but it, it leaves a lot of people worried that once that ends, once the Fed pulls back from those policies, that that will be bad for stocks. And that might be the case, but you also have to remember that when the Fed does start pulling back from its policies, it's only going to do that once the economy is getting stronger. So the question is whether the strengthening economy will be enough to offset the Fed raising interest rates when, it's, when it stops its quantitative e easing policies. And if you go back in history, that's, that's really the case. If you remember, we raised interest rates from 2003 to 2006 from about 1 to 5 percent, and the stock market went up 50 percent. So it's really hard to time what the Fed is doing with interest rates and to sort of guess what that's going to do with the stock market. If you're an investor who's thinking about changing their policy because of what the Fed is doing, you're probably going to be, be making mistakes. It's probably not something you want to do. All right, that's going to do it for Thursday. Let's look ahead to Friday. Matt, what's the stock you have on your radar? Darden Restaurants. You know, they report earnings tomorrow. Olive Garden, uh, Red Lobster. You know, this is a good barometer for consumer spending, especially on the low to mid, mid end. I'm, I'm paying attention. Okay. Brian, what about you? Uh, Tiffany, the luxury jeweler, uh, has been a struggling brand recently, but the shares just aren't cheap enough yet to be attractive. So I'm going to watch their earnings and see if the stock gets any cheaper. Okay. For Matt Argusinger and Brian Hinman, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. People on the show may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against. Don't buy or sell stocks based solely on what you hear.